All right, guys, we got some stuff to talk about today. Talking head video, um, kind of a big one. Apparently, the now six, Z, Z690 is trying to burn your house down. <laughs> My inbox is always like the first indicator I have that something's going down. Look, if it's a bunch of people regurgitating to me the same one post or the same one article, that's not, that's not enough to make me go, is something happening? But when I've been getting like bombarded in my inbox and then I'm getting, being sent to articles like digital trends, now I'm starting to go, okay, something might be actually happening here. And now there's several different uh, tech media outlets that have reported on this. They're all written articles as far as I can tell. Um, WCCF Tech did one, but you guys know how I feel about WCCF Tech. They, like any one outlet should be taken with a grain of salt ourselves included. WCCF take tech is, uh, is uh, but anyway, I digress. They are mentioned in this article, but, and I'll link the Digital Trends article down below. Hopefully I'm not gonna DDoS their site. I hate when I link articles because I always bring down their site because the amount of people that are watching and, and it's unintentional, but it, it happens. Apparently, Asus RG Z690 Hero, the Maximus Hero board, has some sort of a fault in it uh, to the point of where there's actual fire. Happening. Now, I feel like the last couple of years, every single launch has included fire on someone's card at some point, whether it be a card, a motherboard, a power supply. Y'all can say things are heating up. <laughs> Yay. I'm here all week. Okay. <clears throat> no, I'm actually only here till Thursday. Friday's a day off. Okay. But the interesting thing is like normally the, the points of fire like we found on the 3080s and the further wind threes and, and all that stuff that was happening in the 3090s with the further wind cards on EVGA, all of these were power related. They were either capacitors or VRMs or MOSFETs or something that were burning up, which makes sense because those things are power step downs, right? They're designed to deliver power. They're gonna get the hottest if they have defects under load. That's gonna that's gonna show its its ugly head if there's some sort of a, of a power phasing capacitor issue that's causing causing burn up. The interesting thing about the Z690, we'll put a photo of it up here. This is what a proper one looks like. This is the exact board in question. This is the exact board that we did our testing with, and this board spent a lot of time under load with no problems. But obviously, uh, enough people have had problems to where it's all over Reddit. It's on Asus ROG's own forums all over the place, to where something is causing the area right up here in this top right corner, underneath the Q code readout, to burn up. Now, what's funny is if you turn it around and look behind it, there's actually some sort of a prom or a chip back here. Now, this is where things start to get a little bit convoluted in this story. Digital Trends is reporting that WCCF Tech is saying that the MOSFETs and stuff right here are not related to the memory, even though they're right above it. Because the first indicator that you're gonna have some sort of a problem with this particular board is you get a Q53 code. And that basically says incompatible memory. People are trying to tie together that code with this particular array of, of, of power delivery, or maybe whatever's happening on the backside right here to uh, memory. But the problem is that everyone that's had the problem with this board, either one, not posting, because th the issues have ranged from something simple of just won't post, you get the Q53, nothing's happening, it's dead. Like it, it won't come alive. It just turns on instant code 53, nothing happens, doesn't post, doesn't progress. All the way to they're playing games and or even just surfing the internet under non-load conditions and then they actually hear a little pop, the system freezes and then they smell burning Blue, magic blue smoke and they look over, it's either glowing, some reports of it have been glowing, that corner is so hot it's glowing, or it's actually on fire, active flame. Which at that point, just like the situation that happened with the uh, Corsair, or the uh, Corsair, but the uh, NZXT H1 PCIe riser, anytime fire is involved, a very, very serious situation is happening that has to be addressed. Even if it's only a handful of people, that could lead to loss of life, obviously. So it's a very big deal. Now, although the H1 issue was very widespread versus this, this is just emerging now. So who knows how many people are yet to experience this issue or even realize they're experiencing this issue. Maybe it hasn't happened yet. Uh, it's, it's a really weird one. Now, the thing is that the reason why I brought up WCCF Tech and their mention of the fact that the particular componentry that's, that's, un, that's right here that's catching fire, and you guys saw the photo of the fire area, so you can tell it's happening right here underneath the Q code readout. They say that these, part, these parts right here in terms of the schematic are not related to, to, to memory. So yeah, WCCF Tech is saying the 4C10B MOSFET, which is right here, is not related to DDR5 DIMM slots. 
That said, overclockers.net, and this is direct from their, this is not verbatim, this is direct from the over, uh, Digital Trends article, it says overclock.net confirms that certain DDI5 manufacturers are flashing faulty SPD information within the XMP profiles for specific kits, which could culminate in excessive voltages causing the boards to burn up. So what we have right there are actually two conflicting pieces of information. This is what's difficult about these types of stories is until Asus ROG gets these boards back and can identify what happened in the boards that have failed, take their own boards, test, and monitor the failure as it's happening, we're not gonna know exactly what's causing it. Because if WCCF Tech is saying that the MOSFET that's catching fire right here, allegedly catching fire, I say allegedly because we don't know exactly where the fire's starting yet. It could be underneath right here. Because I just noticed underneath this spot is another component. Maybe that's burning up and not the MOSFETs on the front. But if they're saying diagram wise, it's not even related to the DDR5 dim slots, then the DDR5 dim voltage draw may not be related at all. And it's interesting too, because we know DDR5 pulls less voltage than DDR4 does, right? In, in terms of the XMP profiles. Most DDR4 uh, under XMP profiles were pulling 1.35 volts, but we know that DDR5 is 1.2. So it's actually less voltage. So it's also hard to say if the voltage draw is too great for some reason, it doesn't mean it can't cause a cascading uh, failure effect where the effect starts somewhere else, the failure starts somewhere else, but then uh, exacerbates somewhere else in right because a lot of times it's kind of like a drip right if you have water dripping in your car and it's running along a tube and dripping somewhere else you might think it's dripping over there but it's actually dripping over here bad analogy in terms of like electricity works but i'm saying that it doesn't necessarily mean the problem is starting here related to that mosfet it could be uh, having a greater effect there if the voltages are having a problem somewhere else electrical engineers and rog are the ones that are gonna have to figure out what's happening here. But the only reason I'm even pointing this out is the fact that this particular board does not have the shield on the back. The flat shield on the back that comes with like the higher end board like I showed you I wanted to use with my personal build eliminates any possibility of any of these traces back here shorting something. Now the user um, that specifically started this story on Reddit who had the, the problem with the board burning up states that he verified nothing was pinched back here. I was worried that maybe something was touching this somehow with a solder next to it and bridging this and causing this to burn up. States that he had absolutely no wires back here whatsoever. Doesn't mean it maybe wasn't touching on the back of the case, but I digress, the standoff should keep that from ever happening. Apparently built another system with the same board and experienced the same problem. Again, I'm not, I'm not saying that he's wrong or right or whatever. That's all hearsay. Everything regarding this situation so far is currently hearsay. But the point of this video is to say, if you have adopted Intel 12th gen, and apparently this problem also happened to 12700K, not 12900K even, which is the highest end SKU right now of 12th gen, showing that it's not so much a power delivery problem in that it's drawing too much power. It would mean that there's some sort of a design defect that is now rearing its ugly head in all sorts of different power draw situations. Surfing the net, depending on what the website is doing, whether or not it's video encoding or not, has all sorts of different effects on how power draw on the system is gonna work. Remember back in the day, there were sites that were known to actually be causing uh, systems to fail, overheat and crash because websites were sketchily doing um, mining on people's systems through web interface. And that was like way back at the beginning of the mining craze. And I remember one site I, site I went to brought my uh, Ryzen 1800X at the time up to 90C by just loading the website and it was obvious something was happening. But that doesn't mean that, um, you know, that's obviously what's happening here. I'm just saying that there's all sorts of different use case scenarios and draw on, in terms of power on your system, depending on what the website's doing. There's a lot of flash, there's there a lot of Java, there's there a lot of stuff that has to be decoded on the screen. It, it, it actually, websites can actually put your system under load depending on, again, what they're doing. I'm a little disappointed about this, not because, uh, I, look, ROG is one of our sponsors, but obviously safety to our viewers is a huge concern of ours. So if there's any chance of this board having, causing fire, we're gonna point it out. It makes me also wanna set this board back up in a test bench situation and kind of let it go when we're here and it's being supervised, because obviously we don't want anything catching fire while we're not here. Although we could build it in a metal box, you know, and put it on the concrete. And then if you come in in the morning, we're like, hey, look, it's just a charred mess. Then we'll know something happened. But no, I'm actually disappointed because this was gonna be my fallback plan uh, for my personal rig because I was gonna use the Z690 um, Maximus Extreme, which has the nice plate on the back, like I said, but all 90 uh, degree right angle connectors, which was making it kind of difficult to use the cases I was thinking about using because of fitment issues with EATX and then a 90 degree on top of that. So I went, well, I could just use the hero board. It's not as high class of a board. I say not as high class. It's a $600 motherboard. It's absolutely not for the faint of heart in terms of pricing. So it's not like it's a pleb board or anything. It's just, I had a higher tier board I wanted to use. So I was gonna be able to use this one in more cases. And now I'm a little afraid to kind of use it. 
um, in my personal rig anyway. I'm not afraid to use it in a test bin situation where we are gonna try and identify if we're gonna have any problems with it. But we use this board for a lot of testing and we personally haven't had any issues with it, but if you think about how many boards are in the wild and the fact that so far six reports of them catching fire or having the faulty burn up issue here, because the, the, the reports range from just the Q53 postcode not moving forward to the red LEDs right here, the red LED readout turns orange because of the heat and it's kind of melted a little bit, all the way to completely charred and or active flame. It's all over the place in terms of its, its issues. And most of the time people were reporting that their system was working perfectly fine, turned it off, went to turn it back on, got Q53 and it was dead ever since. So it happened during the post phase. But also actively while people were using it, they've heard a pop and a crack and smelled and looked over and the thing was burned up. So we do these types of videos because we want you guys to be safe. And if you're using this board, my recommendation to you is going to be, obviously if you can manage, don't use it at all until uh, this is fully addressed. There is a BIOS update uh, 8011 that ROG has come out with, which talks specifically about better memory compatibility, um, which uh, I believe in this report here is, they're also stating that uh, that, from ROG is supposed to potentially address this issue, but I don't think that's been formally addressed. So until it's been formally addressed, I would avoid using the board at all cost. If you have to use it, don't leave it running unattended. That, that is first and foremost, be attentive when you're using the system if there's any chance of this catching fire whatsoever. We have used dozens and dozens of ROG boards around here. And it's unfortunate that they kind of landed on the wheel of fire this time around because I swear to God, between the last few launches up until this day, it's just like, what brand's next on having some sort of a major fault? Uh, I have no doubt in my mind, ROG will be transparent and forthcoming about whatever is happening with these boards and will issue fixes. Um, folks that apparently have initially reached out to ROG with the Q53 code, um, have got have received replacement boards and apparently there's reports of the replacement boards having the same problem I have no doubt that they're gonna make it right and they're gonna be transparent and they're gonna tell everyone what's going on And they're gonna handle it The problem is lawyers are involved in all that sort of stuff Especially when it comes to fire and you know, I'll know how lawyers can be so with that said be safe if you've experienced any issues with the Z690 board specifically, I don't want to hear about your Z590s or your Z490s I want to know about this problem specifically if you were affected by this Comment down below what your setup is and what you were doing when you experienced the problem. We'll probably set this back up with our 12700, let it go, um, come up with some sort of a, a automated script or something that's just going through different websites and random stuff to kind of just keep it active and not sitting there in a sleep state to see if we can't figure out um, if this board's gonna end up having a similar problem. It's unfortunate because I, I, I hear about these problems all the time. Like our, our For The Win 3 3090 cards, I had three of them, ran custom BIOS on those and overclocked the living crap out of those when we were doing the initial like Port Royal like comparisons and, and competition with Steve. Never had a single problem whatsoever with it. But so many people had problems with their stock ones that came from the same batch of boards. And you guys all know how that turned out with the New World situation and any sort of a, a load kind of bring in to light a soldering defect in the VRMs in the 3090s, which e EBGA fixed and made right. We never had a problem. So it's frustrating to know that we have samples from the same set that people are having problems with and we never experience it. So that's why we have to count on you guys to tell us what you're experiencing. Thanks for watching guys. Be safe with these boards. And as always, we'll see you guys tomorrow.